Okay, so the chemical we're focusing on today is not in the lab. It's not even in the lab storage area or in sort of my dumping ground. It's actually in this other bit of the shed, which you never see because I point the camera in the other direction, just around the corner, just a few meters away. So this isn't really lab anymore. This is just general shed, but we happen to see this yellow fire extinguisher here. What is this thing? There's a couple of things that let you know that this is quite an old fire extinguisher. First of all, it's got a date here of 1974. I don't know whether that's its last service or when it was manufactured. It's written as three pounds. We're in Australia, so that's obviously means it's quite an old system. It was uh, manufactured in Australia, so obviously it's old because we don't do that anymore. Also, it's halon, and halons have not been around for a little while. So this cylinder contains three pounds of bromochlorodifluoromethane, which is a halon, and it's got a halon number of 1211. So halons are very, very good at destroying the atmosphere, and it's basically this class of chemicals, the halons, that are responsible for the current hole in the ozone layer. This is why I think this chemical is one of the most dangerous chemicals I have, because if there was no laws passed to prevent the, you know, the release of these gases, the hole in the ozone layer would you know, keep getting bigger, we'd eventually destroy a lot of the ozone layer, and there would be a dramatic increase in deaths from skin cancer, from environmental change. But now, they're hardly seen anymore, really. I mean, I'm allowed to own one of these if I'm on board a, uh, an, an aeroplane, I think, um, a specific type of aeroplane, also a Collins-class submarine. Obviously, I'm not on a Collins-class submarine because I don't get that many noise complaints from my neighbour. So I called the local dump, and even though they have a sort of a hazardous waste disposal section, they politely requested that I don't bring any Halon products. They were completely fine with it when I, they just thought it was an old fire extinguisher, but when they worked out it was a Halon fire extinguisher, they said, no, please don't bring it here. Um, we can't deal with Halon. And I assume that goes for other uh, hazardous waste dumps, although I could be wrong. I finally got it off the wall. <laughs> After filming all this, you know, this pre-bit of the video so far, and, you know, the previous videos on my channel, I finally got around to actually taking it off the wall, undoing that latch for the first time since like the 70s, and I realised something that should have been immediately obvious to me. It was fucking empty. <laughs> it is fucking empty. I mean, it's got no pressure gauge at the top, I should have realised that, but it's also like super light, um, so it would be quite heavy if it was full, and you can feel it, and you know it's empty. So this whole video might be a flop, because I might be able to keep the canister if it's empty. I don't know. Um, we'll have to continue on. I might not be able to. I don't actually know. Hello, so I'm about to go to the council office to ask them about uh, halon disposal. They probably will have no idea. Um, they might freak out. I don't really know. Um, I especially don't know why I'm doing this bit of clip, why I need a data introduction. I just wanted to feel like a real YouTuber for a change. So the advice I've been given is to go to my local CFS, the local uh, country fire service, the volunteer firefighting um, agency and give it to them. And they might have no idea what to do with it, but if I give it to them, it's their responsibility and they can just sort of pass it up, chain of command, until someone knows what to do with it. Uh, obviously, well, I hope they're not gonna find me for giving it to them. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'll walk in near the building and they'll be like, oh, fucking, he's in possession of a Halon fire extinguisher. Okay, so this has a date stamp of 1974 and in 1987 was the Montreal Protocol, which banned this Halon, um, all the other, well, a lot of the other halons and a lot of other ozone depleting substances. It's such an important protocol because these chemicals, these halons and the other ozone depleting substances that they first banned were wrecking real havoc with the environment. And if we didn't have that Montreal Protocol, if we, if the politicians couldn't come to a decision and just let people, you know, domestic people just have fire extinguishers full of halon and industries just pump it out if they needed to. We could have caused mass destruction to the earth, you know, really, really ruin the environment. These are very dangerous, not really directly. Um, it does say, uh, warning, fumes may be given off and are liable to be dangerous, especially in a confined area. That's more a suffocation thing, it's really not that dangerous. It's dangerous indirectly because this destroys the ozone layer. So this being illegal, what does that mean? Well, according to the people I've called, it's a $500 fine if I am caught in possession with a full or empty canister of Halon. Obviously the police aren't going to come to my house to, you know, look for Halon, but, you know, if they're just in the house for any reason um, and they see the Halon, you know, I could get fined. Not that the police have any reason to turn up at my house. Anyway, let's go to the CFS and drop it off and see what they say. Yes, I'm in my car again because I'm an absolute loser.
So I went to the CFS last night and they had no idea what to do with a halon cylinder. I could have forced them to take it, I guess. I could have just left it with them and said, oh, well, it's your problem. I'm, you know, you legally have to take it. But, you know, I don't, don't really want to cause problems and it seems like they, you know, would have to go to heaps of effort to try and, like, find out what to do and then do it. But I guess that is an option if I, if I, you know, gave no shits about it. But, yeah, I'm interested and I'll pursue this further and, um... Because they obviously have to give it off to someone, so who are they giving it off to? So they told me to ring another CFS office, um, and but they probably will have no idea either. So what I'm going to ring instead is the National Halon Bank. Who are the National Halon Bank? Well, Australia has just stopped manufacturing Halon products altogether, and we stopped importing them. But there is still some demand for Halon. If we've got a new plane being built or a new submarine, new submarines, you still need Halon fire extinguishers because they're the best. And there's not actually any better alternatives out on the market yet. There's still just the Halon that you've got to use in aircraft and submarines. So how does Australia, if we're building new planes and new submarines, how do we put the new fire extinguishers in there? Well, that's where the National Halon Bank comes in. They collected up all the um, now illegal fire extinguishers from domestic homes and then they pumped all the Halon into big storage tanks or kept them in the cylinders themselves. And then when they need a new Halon product, they just sell the Halon back. So Australia has a fixed amount of Halon. Um, well, it's not fixed because if you let off a Halon fire extinguisher, the amount of Halon in Australia goes down, but it's never increasing. Hopefully soon, in the next few years, we actually come up with a replacement um, product to use in a fire extinguisher in planes or submarines. But for now, we still have this huge reservoir of... Well, it's actually not that huge. It's only probably a few thousand tons of Halon, which for a whole nation, even though we're Australia, so we're not really, you know, that important, um, it's actually, for a bulk sort of chemical product, it's actually not much. Um, but that's just because we don't use much of it anymore, really. There's probably some other use I'm forgetting about. Um, if you use Halon in your everyday life, um, and I'm talking more specifically about Halon 1211, which is the BCF that I've got in the fire extinguishers. I know there are other halons and they have other uses, but I'm just talking about halon 1211 here because that's what we're trying to dispose of. I've held back from calling the National Halon Bank for the moment because they seem like more of a place you call if you're a business or a big industrial place. And they also seem to charge a $20 fine per kilo of halon disposal. Now that I know the halon canister is empty, that technically that cost is zero, but they still got to take the cylinder. I'm not sure if I'll still charge you for that. And also I'm worried because they sort of talk about, oh, arrange for dis you know, for like disposal. I'm worried that they're gonna send people to my house, like EPA people to come pick up the cylinder, which obviously I don't want. At least these guys will know what I'm meant to do with Halon and hopefully they'll know some laws as well and whether it I can actually keep the cylinder if it's empty because apparently the other guy said it's a $500 fine whether it was full or empty. So I've got to try and confirm that with the National Halon Bank. They might not know, but you know, I'll give them a call. I was cleaning out my shed the other day and I found a, um, a Halon fire extinguisher. Um, one of the Halon 1211 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I was just wondering uh, how I'd go about disposing of it. Okay, so I'll need to put you through to the right person. Um, how are you doing? Not too bad. Um, your best option is to hand it into your local um, CFA or Metropolitan Fire Brigade. Okay. And then they'll um, forward it on to the National Halon Bank. All right. Okay. Because I, I went, I went, I went down and saw them just my local CFS, and I mean they obviously have sort of no idea what to do with it, but um, I guess I could leave it with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. Um, yeah. Hand it in there and then they'll hand in the um, appropriate paperwork okay. and that forward on to where I'm at, the Halon Bank. I think, I think technically it's empty, um, the cylinder, but I've been told that there's a fine whether it's full or empty and it's found yeah. in my possession. Is that yeah, that's yeah, correct? Regardless if it's um, full or empty, we, we, we kind of take it as if everything's full, even though it is empty. So yeah, there is definitely a fine for a possession yeah. of one, isn't there? Okay. Yeah, so definitely, definitely hand it in, regardless if it's empty or full. Yeah. And when when they come in here, we even though they're empty, it's a bit silly, but we take it as if they're full. Thanks yeah, for that. No worries. Um, thanks for the call. All right. So, got to go down and force the local CFS to take it after all. Maybe I'll I'll call. I'll call the regional CFS and just let them know, because it's probably going to go through to them anyway.
got a bit of an interesting phone call. Um, so I've found a Halon fire extinguisher in my shed the other day. I went down to the local CFS last night and um, asked if they wanted to take it and they didn't really know what to do with it, which is fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, you, you can bring it in. We don't know how to dispose of something. No. Pa a well, a pa a... yeah, that's why I rang the Halon Bank. Apparently, you guys meant to send it to the Halon Bank. The, to be honest, the cylinder is actually empty, but apparently I have to treat it like it's full. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. So, Look, I think we've got a couple other ones we need to get rid of here. So, okay. Yeah, i bring it into the headquarters office. That... All right. Go down to their office. Okay, so I'm approaching the headquarters to drop off the Halon for the uh, the final time. Um, sad moment, you know. The kids, they grow up so fast. Man, this feels really awkward just talking to myself as all the traffic goes past, judging me. Yeah, so hopefully they they take it this time. Um, this is more of a head office of CFS, um, and they're the people I rang and said they could take it, even though they had no idea really what to do with it. So hopefully this goes well. I will say goodbye to my. Cylinder of BCF. Okay, so I've mentioned that the halons are bad, but this is a chemistry channel, so let's actually talk about why they're bad. We have three different classes of compounds here. Technically, they're all halons, but we're just using the word halons for um, the carbons that contain a chlorine and a bromine and a fluorine. Here we have, well, the Earth, and there's lots of different layers of the atmosphere, but these are sort of the most top two. And at the very top two, we have oxygen, a dioxygen, as it is in the other sort of levels, but because it's so close to space, it gets lots of UVC radiation. And UVC radiation breaks it up into two oxygen radicals, which are very highly reactive species. And these oxygen radicals can then react with oxygen itself to form ozone. And so ozone is a thing that absorbs um, this UVC um, radiation as well as, you know, this reaction itself is, is what's preventing this UVC radiation from getting down to Earth and giving yourself skin cancer, among other things. Let's start with the HCFC. So these are, they're sort of being phased out, but they're still not technically banned um, in a lot of countries. Um, the reason for that is they have a hydrogen. So when they get to, through this, they have to obviously go from Earth to the stratosphere. But as they go through the troposphere, they encounter this species here, which is a hydroxide radical. And these hydroxide radicals can quit really easily rip off that hydrogen. And then you're left with this sort of species which, when it's in the troposphere, can break down. So not much HCFCs reach this sort of ozone-forming region. Some does, and it does sort of inhibit things, and they're not really that friendly anyway. Um, so they're still sort of used, they're refrigerant, really. That's, but they're being phased out. Next ones are the freons. Now, these were phased out a few more years ago. Now, once again, they were sort of the first really good refrigerants, I believe. Now, they don't have the hydrogen on them, so they get past this troposphere just fine. Once they get to this, through into the stratosphere, they get hit by this UVC radiation, just like the, um, the dioxygen does. And just like the dioxygen, it splits up and forms a radical. And so these form Cl dot, or the dot means it's a radical. So they form chlorine radicals. Chlorine radicals are bad because they react with ozone. So Cl dot plus O3 goes into O2 plus ClO, and there's a, and that's still the radical there. And it gets worse. This uh, chlorine oxide radical then reacts with a, another oxygen radical to form the Cl radical and O2. So not only is it destroying the ozone once it's formed, but it's actually preventing the ozone from forming by reacting with the oxygen radicals. The most important thing about this process is that we get back the Cl radical. So the Cl radical is not actually consumed by this process. So once we're up in the stratosphere, the gases are pretty spread out. These Cl radicals can not just stay there for like a few minutes, a few weeks, they actually stay there for decades. And they do this process over and over and over again until eventually they sort of get removed from the atmosphere. So that's the freons. Now, halons are basically exactly the same, but as well as generating chloride radicals, they also generate bromine at radicals. Now, these are the worst of the halon radicals. Fluorine doesn't take part, iodine really doesn't take part, but bromine is 40 times 
better at this process than chlorine does. It's really, really aggressive in this breakdown of oxygen and the scavenging of um, oxygen radicals. So in terms of actual numbers, one kilogram destroys can destroy 50 tons of ozone. That's a lot. That's 50 tons of ozone for one kilogram of halide. Now my cylinder, that BCF yellow cylinder, contained three pounds, which is roughly one and a half kilograms of um, BCF. And so that could possibly outlive me and destroy over 70 tons of ozone in its lifetime. And that's just me releasing one cylinder. So it really makes you appreciate that these are really bad. The Freons are, you know, still bad, nowhere near as bad as these Halons, and HCFCs are nowhere near as bad as the Freons. These are banned, these are somewhat banned, and these are sort of phasing out. And that's a really good thing. Yep, it's gone. The head CFS office just took the cylinder. Some guy came out in uniform and um, took the cylinder and was really surprised at seeing one so old still. Some of you will be pleased to know that they didn't actually take any contact details of me. They didn't even ask me my name, to be honest. You know, here I was worried about being fined and, um, nah, it's all, it's all good. So let's summarise what we've learned. Halons are kind of bad, actually really bad, and it's quite a good thing that they're banned because they were really wrecking havoc with the environment. There could be a few of you watching who have a halon cylinder in your house. That's probably not terribly unlikely. So what do you do with it? Well, in Australia, go to your local CFS, um, maybe go to a head office if you can, a regional office, and uh, talk to them. They, they'll be okay with it. Um, there's no fines. There's no cost to handing one in. Even if it's empty, you need to hand it in. Australia, once again, the National Halon Bank will collect on all those cylinders up. There's also a fine. Um, if you're caught in possession with one, like just in your house, obviously not when you're in the process of handing it in, which in Australia is apparently $500, whether it's full or empty. I assume that these are the cases for other countries. If people in the comments can say if they definitely know what the rules and regulations are for different countries, I know that halon cylinders are obviously illegal, but I don't know how much the fines are or where to hand it in. But the general advice is go to your local firefighting office agency and go talk to them there. You can also go to the police office if you want, but I know you Americans watching will start going like, oh, fucking police. Yeah, so that's a really good idea, and, and you should do that, and treat the cylinders as if they're full, even if they're empty, because that's what you should do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've, I kind of missed the cylinder, but now that I know they're actually, you know, it was illegal for me to have it, and that there were fines, um, I'm pretty happy to be rid of it, really. No, I'm kidding, I miss it. Whatever, fucking like, comment, subscribe. I hope you uh, learnt something today or at least enjoy this video. See you next time.